a personal story from my my father-in-law he he has this he told us years ago that he, when he was in high school and stuff he used to do uh like he had a band but he didn't play any instruments and he was an air band and they uh, would yeah. uh, they would but they would set like have shows they'd have these house parties and like 200 kids would show up and we would always like make fun because i think they were van halen uh air band yeah and we, we uh, me, my wife and, and his uh, his wife, you know, my mother in law, always make fun of him. Like, oh, you know, th- they were called the Pellas. The Pellas are going to show up, you know, at the whatever playing the playing the fair tonight, whatever the case is. He, it's just funny, but now it's just interesting that you bring that up because, like, you're right, it was way before video culture. So, like, that's way before any of that stuff. You know, was, he grew up, he was born in like what, something like sixty six or something like that. So it's the exact same era that you were born in. So now I feel a little guilty uh, making fun of him. <laughs> Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I do think it's kind of an embarrassing thing to create, you know, I mean, as an adult, I would, I would, you know, I would just be horrified if I were to act out music for people and when they could watch me act out music, but you know, you could also see like for a child uh, who, who doesn't have any experience with it, with an instrument that the kinetic connection to music uh, that it's audio, but it's kinetic, it's audio kinetic. So, and, and also there are lyrics, so there's narrative, Mm. And then there are also like, I don't know, when you when you hear the combination of the whole thing, like the gestalt effect of it is that it, it can be quite dramatic. Yeah. Especially uh, so in a time that, like you said, way before video. So yeah, in order to see Van Halen, you only saw them once every four years when they came to your city. If so that. yeah, if that, exactly, if they came to your city, exactly. Yeah. So I now talking about it, it makes a little more sense as to like, hey, if you love Van Halen, you could see people playing it to some degree with a live kind of feel, whether actually live or not. It's a very interesting perspective that makes me appreciate his, uh, his middle yeah, school, high I mean, school. You know, I think I think like um, you know, uh, to some degree, you know, the, all of the arts are gonna you're gonna find connect points of connection amongst the arts, but like for kids to be acting out music. Well, there's an element of acting in it and, and yeah. there's an element of drama in it. That yeah. is, it's, Very it's, it's, man. it's not separate from the music, but you can see how it's sort of all of a sudden it becomes, you know, adjacent to acting itself and the drama of a play or a movie. And it's like, you know, I just think that it's normal for kids to want to be, to have a kinetic relationship with music, especially like for a kid uh, such as myself and, and other kids like me, I know there are a lot of kids like this, but like I, I had no ingrained interest in sports. Mm. And in fact, sports were very confusing to me because the I, the only reason I did sports is because I thought I, I had to. And then it was discovered that it wasn't so much that I was not athletic at all. It was that I was confused and disinterested in the rules. I didn't know whether I was on offense or defense necessarily, or I would forget. Whereas it seemed like the the, the sort of like laws of music when it, when it came to engaging in music, mm-hmm. there was there was a sense from from my teacher that I I was already engaged in trying to figure out what those laws and rules were. So that was completely the opposite from sports. Like my, I was I was a total space cadet when it came to sports, and then music was already something that my mind was working on before I even played. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure it out. It's super interesting, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Now, when you were telling the story, you, you mentioned that when you started to play with Jeff, it was a, a career defining moment that led to a lot of opportunity after the fact. Um, yeah. So kind of when kind of what we were talking about before we started filming, just the, the whole goal with and the idea of, of sharing these stories is kind of like showing people that it's possible to make, some, make something in the industry. But sometimes people are like, okay, I want to do something in the industry and I know it's possible. I just don't know how to kind of get there. I don't know how to connect the dots. So could you elaborate just a little bit more on, on how those dots connected for you going from like these gigs, you know, playing small little venues or playing with small little gigs, you know, getting fired, getting hired to then playing with, you know, a huge name and then how that led to so many more opportunities. It's kind of like that connection of dots. One thing I will say to young people is that um, if you experience what feels like complete devastation uh, like if, if you fail or are perceived to have failed or if you get fired or if, if the people around you have decided you're not good enough uh, and, and then you actually agree with them that you're not good enough and that hurts you a whole hell of a lot, that actually would describe perfectly many of my experiences, that those are part of the experiences of, I think, of probably most successful artists. Like, I feel like a lot of successful artists probably have the very same experiences of people who experience some type of failure that is so painful that they quit. Mm. In other words, I don't think the all of the successful artists, you know, and musicians or whatever, I don't think that they lived a life where they did not fail yeah, sure. and, and, and they did not experience a devastating pain. Mm. 
I think that probably many of them did, and I certainly did. And I think that I a lot of what artists, I think, do is try to have a, a bit of a negotiation with fate or with, with whatever it is that you've been handed and say, well, I've been dealt a certain pack of cards here. You know, I, I have these assets and I have these kind of handicaps or whatever they're called, you know, I have these liabilities, let's call them. And, you know, what, how can I be useful? How can I be in this game? What role will I be suited for where I could be remunerated and, and I could be in the flow of music or, in, or in, in, in some way creative? So that leads me to the idea that a lot of that stuff isn't really linear. Like my vision of what I might have wanted to be when I was 14 or 10 or 18 or 25, you know, those are different ideas and ideals or archetypes of what, you know, what I might be able to achieve or be or be seen as or whatever, or, or, or what I might be able to do, have, you know, in terms of my capabilities or something like those are all different narratives. So, you know, some of it is, you know, just, a, there's a bit of flexibility there with, with accepting or possibly rejecting roles that you might take on mm -hmm. in order to uh, kind of push the whole professional side of things forward. Yeah. Very I mean, I think, you know, there are different, there's part of the spectrum. You, you could be doing something that's very creatively rewarding and it's, it's well compensated for, you know, financially or not. And then you could be something that's, that's completely creatively stultifying and is either well remunerated or not. You know, I, it, there's infinite combinations almost of those things. So then you're going to have to get into how do you define success? 